Okay, today I'm going to swap out a uh, alternator on the 2008 Ford F-250. It's the 6.4 liter power stroke. Um, here's the new alternator. I uh, picked it up off of Amazon. This is the uh, 200 amp. My truck, my truck came uh, stock with uh, 125 amp, uh, and it's been acting up a little bit lately. It, the uh, it's just not charging that great right now. I think the uh, alternator is. Uh, kind of on its way out. I did some tests with it. Um, I think it's the regulator because it's not uh, it's not putting out uh, enough amps into the battery uh, at all times during uh, cruising speeds on the highway and, and whatnot. Um, I do a lot of plowing in the winter and uh, with this stock alternator at 125 amp, I figured it'd be a good time to uh, upgrade anyway to the 200 amp. So I didn't go crazy testing uh, the alternator in the truck as it is because I figure it's a good time to upgrade anyway with all the heavy duty uh, plowing that the truck sees. Uh, once I do pull the old alternator out, I will uh, do a bench test and uh, see what the real condition of it was anyway. But like I said, I'm more than happy to uh, upgrade. Now thanks to a lot of good folks on uh, YouTube that provide videos, they show how to get this alternator out which is down below this mess and it could be tough to get it out. I understand the easiest way is to go through the wheel hub. You remove the, uh, you remove the inner fender above the wheel and you get to it that way. So that's how I'm gonna to attempt today and uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't think I'm gonna to need to remove the wheel, uh, but we'll see once I start uh, pulling some things off. Okay, so I got the wheel well cover out of there. There it is sitting off to the side. Uh, involved a couple different uh, bolts and fasteners. Uh, here they are. So there's one, two, three little ones. That took a 7 30 seconds uh, socket to get those out. Those uh, next two, actually the next three, was a 5 16 socket. The uh, smaller uh, diameter washer ones, they're up underneath the, uh, uh, the plastic shield on the uh, uh, more toward the front of the vehicle. And then there was this one big bolt uh, on there too, and that is, I believe, a 7 16 There was one of these little plastic push pieces that were in, uh, in there too. That was uh, toward the rear, rear of the vehicle, up underneath. And here's what it looks like. So there's the alternator that's gonna come out. And along the hub here is, along the fender I should say, that's where those little tiny 732nd bolts came out of. These little plastic ones, they do not need to be removed. That holds in the uh, trim work around, so that's not part of uh, removing that. And uh, let's not forget, I believe that's an air conditioning line there, and then there's this, uh, that, that attaches into the plastic uh, shield as well, so we gotta somehow jam that back in so that air conditioning line doesn't rattle around. So that's what was involved in getting that out. And now we're going to uh, start digging away at the alternator. I understand there's a total of three bolts. So there's two on the bottom. There's the electrical connections that have to come out. And then I believe there's one up top. First, I'm going to have to get a hold of that tensioner. Oh, I don't like how that looks. Looks like it's getting separated there a little bit. I may need to replace that. Okay. But I have to get up underneath the truck to uh, get a 3 8 inch uh, ratchet on the, um, on the uh, tensioner and give a pull on that so I could uh, pull the belt off of the uh, alternator. Okay, so far the hardest part about this has been uh, getting that 3 8 inch uh, extension onto the tensioner. So you can see the tensioner back there and there's my 3 8 inch um, short extension on a 3 8 inch ratchet and then the black pipe is going down to loosen the tension on the belt. Now, what I did, because I'm all alone here, I put a, uh, there's the pipe coming out the bottom. Get some light on there. So I put a come along on there and cranked the come along to take the tension off of the, uh, off of the belt. Now, I was holding onto the strap with the tension off and I still didn't have enough let me see if I could get a hand in here. I still don't have enough to flip this belt off. So what I'm going to try to do is just have the strap on there. And 
while it's loose, I'm going to take the alternator off and, pop, uh, and see if I could slip it out of the belt. Uh, now getting to these bolts was a little bit tricky here. So I used a wobble socket on a nice long extension. Oh, the, uh, the socket got stuck up there. But anyway, um, so there's three. There's one down here, one there. You can see I loosened them already. This one, the brake line gets a little bit in the way, but that's why a wobble socket helps. And then that one up there, you just kind of got to squeeze a socket into it. Let's see if I can get it out. I'm going to leave it in there because I still have to loosen it up. So I'm going to finish loosening up those three bolts, unplug the wiring connection, and take it out. Okay, we got the old alternator out here. And uh, for reference, the three bolts that hold it in, let's see if we can get a shot of that top one there. There it is. So the three bolts that hold it in are, uh, it's a 15 millimeter socket that you use for that. And this connection just slides out. This one threads in. There is a bolt on the alternator, a stud on the alternator. And that takes a uh, 13 millimeter nut. Here's the old alternator alongside the new one. You can see that that's the nut that takes the uh, 13 millimeter uh, nut. And now I'm going to try to slip the new one back in. Okay, new alternator's in. It's all bolted down. The toughest one is that top bolt in there. There's a little extra bracket on it that has to get lined up. Wire connections are back on. I put some uh, never sees on all the uh, bolts and uh, that connection down there, the one that has a 13 millimeter uh, nut that screws onto the stud. So I put some never sees. I like to use never sees with everything. Uh, just a little word of advice. If you're gonna do it my way with the, uh, put in the strap on uh, to hold the, um, the tensioner back, you know, first you got to slip the pulley on before you bolt anything down, and then it wants to constantly fight you and pull you, and it, it wants to keep falling. So I used a, uh, a bar like this to just kind of get underneath and hold everything up while I was lining, uh, lining the holes. I got that bolt started first. That was the easiest once I lined it up. Uh, just got a couple threads on it to hold it in place. Then I was able to tilt this side up, get that one in, and finally I went for the, uh, for the top one. Um, and uh, bolted them all, all up nice and tight, nice and snug. I just checked the belt from both the top and underneath here to make sure it looks like it's on all the pulleys. It is. So now I will uh, loosen my strap and uh, get the tensioner back on. Okay, everything's all buttoned back up except the uh, wheel well cover. I'll get to that after I test it. Um, but I went in the engine bay here, made sure I didn't leave any tools laying around. and. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the beginning of the video is you go without saying always disconnect your batteries when uh, doing any kind of electrical work. I did have them disconnected. I just uh, connected them back up again. And uh, upon further inspection, I was looking at the old alternator here. There's a nice crack in the housing. I don't know if that had anything to do with it failing or not performing well. It's not that it wasn't working. It just it, it wasn't putting in, it wasn't putting a good charge in. My, uh, my gauges weren't reading a good 14 and a half, 14.6 volts upon, uh, upon running. Uh, I was maybe getting up to, you know, 13 when I was really getting on the, uh, the pedal, but as soon as I back off, it was just hovering around, you know, 12.2 volts, and that's not enough to get a charge in. So let's go start it up and uh, see how much uh, power this sucker's putting out. All right, so I'm in the truck now, and I'm uh, going to start it up. See if how that code is. See if the code is gone. Okay, so in the past, uh, yes, I am very low on fuel. That's due to uh, the next job. I want to clean out the uh, the rail mounted uh, fuel filter, so I wanted to get nice and low. But that's for another time. All right, so after it runs for a couple of minutes, my uh, battery light was coming on. I haven't cleared the code, so. It might still come on, but let's take a look over here at the tuner. All right, that's good. I'm just idling. I'm grabbing 13.5 volts. That should be getting up to uh, 14 and a half. I got the air conditioning off, I got the radio off, but the good sign is the battery uh, 
light hasn't come back on. Here, in the meantime, we'll check the codes. I hate that there's a glare on this, but let's see. DTCs. Yep, 625. That's the old, that's the code that, that has to do with the battery. Generator, field terminal circuit low. Let's clear that out. This is the uh, Gearbox Z Electron Tuner. Ah, there we go. 14.6, 14.7. You see with these diesels, with the glow plugs, I think there's an afterglow. So the glow plugs draw a lot of juice. So when you start it, for a couple minutes after you start it, you might still be reading, uh, you know, in that 13 range because it's still pulling juice off of, uh, off of that. All right, so this is nice having the tuner. I don't have to hook the multimeter up to the... Uh, to the battery. All right, now I'm going to put the air conditioning on. There we go. Full blast on the air conditioning. Still reading 14.6, 14.7. Let's throw the headlights on. Look at that. No drop. Yep, it was certainly a bad alternator. I got the headlights on. I got the air, air conditioning running on high. I don't know what else I can do. I don't have a rear defrost. Alright, problem solved. Got a nice powerful 200 amp generator, I mean uh, alternator in there now. No more battery light showing up on the dash. And just as one last precaution, I'm going to uh, run, out, run out the Costco now and buy two brand new batteries. So it'll be nice and fresh on everything. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody out to tackle the next job. I didn't have to uh, rip anything out of the top of the engine uh, like some of the other uh, uh, mechanics on YouTube will show you just uh, get everything through that wheel well hardest part is uh, getting a uh, ratchet on that tensioner thanks for watching